Okay, so with the decline, disintegration of the Roman Empire in the West, we enter a period known as Late Antiquity. Uh, people used to sort of just say, only talk about the fall, you know, and only talk about the end of Rome. And that was the only thing that was important. But in more recently, folks like uh, Peter Brown have pointed out that actually, you know, there's some interesting stuff going on in this period. It's less that Rome, you know, it's less that, oh, it's the apocalypse, everything comes to the end, and more that things change. The sort of whole system of power that was working in Rome metamorphoses, you know, it shapeshifts into another system, um, which um, is what we're more familiar with from the Middle Ages. Um, he has this great book, actually, um, called Through the Eye of a Needle, which is basically all about how people um, donated money to the church. And one of the things that sort of explains the way the world changed, I think, is that uh, the Roman nobles who had a lot of wealth and power um, and, you know, the people, kind of people who had been hanging around with the emperors, they donated their money to the church. Um, and over time, the church got more and more money and resources. So as the power of the traditional power structure in Rome was going down, the power of the church was going up. They were having more money and more resources because people were donating their money because, you know, you're supposed to donate your money to the poor and the church was going to help take care of the poor. And to be fair, they did. They did things like building hospitals and whatnot. They also uh, built new churches, new buildings, and used it to uh, succeed more and more as a church. Um, so if we think about the Middle Ages as a time being dominated by Christianity in Europe, uh, this is a big reason why. And so nowadays we think if you weren't one of those people who was um, in the center of power in Rome, things might still have been pretty good for you. If you were just like some random person, or some random farmer, you might not care whether uh, the emperor was uh, a guy named Romulus. That's kind of fun. We go from Romulus to Romulus. Um, or whether the emperor was um, or whether there was some other king who was a Gothic king. You might not really care if, you know, they, you just had to pay your taxes to them and that was it. Um, yeah, you'd think, oh, you know, that's fine. Um, uh, you know, I, my life is basically the same. I'm still a farmer. I still hope nobody, uh, har or, you know, affects me directly. And I still hope the that no, nothing burns down my crops or anything like that. But so long as that's not happened, your life might be pretty similar. Now, if you were close to the center of power in Rome, things would be pretty different. Um, but yeah, it, we're sort of transitioning into the medieval period now. And in the medieval period, it's true that like a lot of the trade networks were not um, as uh, you know big or as successful as they were, but we've still seen signs that people are able to trade um, if you, you know, if you want to reach out to your neighbors and your neighbors reach out to the next people, you can still get things from pretty far away. We see signs in the Middle Ages that um, there were kings who had um, wealth that came all the way from uh, Asia. So, you know, it's like uh, things might not have changed that much for, for everybody. Definitely changed a lot for people who were pretty enthusiastic about the Roman Empire, though. And as you ima can imagine... But those who were, they might have found that pretty scary. It was definitely scary to be invaded, to have your city taken over. Um, and you might have thought, like, uh, the world was coming to an end. Of course, some of this stuff happened gradually, but it just seems like uh, there were a lot of shocks to people's systems, especially for those who were in power. Um, and so an interesting response to this comes from this guy, uh, St. Augustine. Uh, you might have heard of him. He's one of the famous saints. He wrote a lot of significant books on Christianity and how people should interpret um, the Bible and interpret Jesus and the life of Jesus. What's that's all about? He kind of clarified for people the idea of heaven and hell um, in important ways. Um, and one of his most famous books is called The City of God. Um, and in The City of God, he actually argues that we don't need Rome anymore because Rome was these, you know, the sort of earthly power that was what was going on in the ordinary world. But that's not God's world. God's world, God's going to build the new city, the city of God in heaven. Um, and so if the world is being destroyed, that's fine. That's part of God's plan. And so we should focus more on our religion than on the disintegration of the various uh, things that we're used to. Um, we can use this time to focus on God. So that was one of his uh, major ideas. Um, uh, another one of his major ideas 
um, was the confessions. He wrote about his own life and how he became a Christian and describes, you know, the mistakes that he made and the sins that he committed. And his idea of sin um, that we have in the Roman Catholic Church is pretty much just uh, the same thing today. Um, this idea that people have this debt, whereas other people at the time, like this guy Pelagius, who nowadays is thought of the heretic, um, but uh, it's mainly just that Augustus's ideas won out. Uh, Pelagius thought that we didn't have a debt to sin, we just had a potential to sin that was the debt. Um, but St. Augustine was more closely connected with uh, people like uh, the emperors and the pope and whatnot, the bishop of Rome. Um, so uh, St. Augustine, huge, huge influence on the way later Christianity would be. So pretty important guy. He was actually acting out of North Africa. He was a bishop of this town of Hippo near Carthage. So this was back when a time when North Africa was still pretty connected to Rome. But that wasn't going to last forever. And that was his whole point. Is nothing is going to last forever except God. Okay, so let's talk about this Byzantine Empire. Yeah, they called themselves Romans, Roma. Um, but... Uh, they were pretty similar to uh, Rome in a lot of ways. They had chariot racing. They had even more chariot racing. They got super obsessed with it. Uh, they built a lot of new churches. They had a lot of assassinations. They continued to have emperors. There's so many Byzantine emperors. It would take a long time to list all of those. Um, they had a lot of eunuchs. For some reason, they got really into the practice of having certain people who worked for them be castrated, which is what a eunuch is, is someone who's more trustworthy because uh, they, uh, he can't have children, basically. Uh, so he's not going to try and steal your money to start a family, or at least that's the idea. About one Byzantine emperor, though, who was so... He was such a strong and compelling emperor that he almost managed to restart the whole Roman Empire. He basically was a very skilled leader, very skilled military guy, um, was very good at solving problems in uh, the Byzantine Empire, and he managed to take back what Rome had lost from the Vandals. So he ruled in the 500s. Um, so uh, this is after you know all the things in the West had fallen apart. But just, Justinian thought, you know, I can take it back. I can take it over and I can uh, uh, make things uh, strong and stable again. And I can reconquer. Um, and, you know, he had a lot of skills and he was a very good leader. And maybe if he'd been able to take Rome and hold on to the capital of Rome um, and, uh, you know, like he, he successfully took over Africa again. So that was part of his empire now. He could have had the full empire. He's also notable for a lot of other things as well. For instance, the R law code um, that is basically the final version of Roman laws, um, it was the basis for um, the laws that we set up today. This is the law code of Justinian. So he got a bunch of uh, lawyers in his empire together to figure out what the law should be and just to uh, think about hundreds of years of of, of lawyers and laws and th think about what the best laws should be and write it all down very clearly so people can understand it. So he's an influence on our modern day through that. Uh, he was a huge patron of religion. He donated a lot of money to churches in Ravenna um, and he built a church called the Hagia Sophia, uh, which is one of the sort of marvels of the Byzantine Empire, I'd think. Um, and the original Hagia Sophia burned down in a riot, so he wasn't without his problems that he had to deal with at home. Um, but Justinian decided to make it up to people by building this gorgeous, beautiful church, which has lasted all this time. Uh, which is about, uh, you know, 1,500 years. That's pretty impressive, a church that lasts 1,500 years. Dang. Okay, and when we're talking about Justinian, we should also talk about Empress Theodora. Theodora, man. She um, was the wife of Justinian and a little bit of a scandalous wife because she was an actress. Now, in the Roman time period, um, an actress is not a noble profession. It's thought of more akin to a stripper. Uh, the actors are sexual. They put on sexual plays. Um, but she married up. Uh, Justinian liked her so much. Uh, we don't know the full story there. But, you know, Maybe he saw one of her plays. Uh, but she married up to become the empress, and she became ex extremely powerful, almost as powerful as Justinian. Um, and she, too, was a big supporter of uh, Christianity. And, in fact, to some degree, she was um, – she had a slightly different version of Christianity than Justinian, so this caused some friction. You know, like he'd be supporting these churches, and she was supporting those churches. 
and uh, you know she was sort of interested in these repressed ideas. Um, but uh, she is today remembered as a saint um, by the uh, Eastern Orthodox Church. But tragically, she died young. Uh, today we think what she died of was probably cancer, but just like Justinian, people would like make a lot of mosaics of her because she was such a, a patron of religion. Okay, but yeah, by 555, this was Justinian's empire. He had Rome, even. Like, uh, this is starting to look pretty familiar, right? This is looking like the Roman Empire again. Um, so could he have brought back the Roman Empire? Should we, in fact, think of him as a Roman Empire emperor and not a Byzantine emperor? Well, unfortunately, his plan kind of fell apart, and it fell apart for a reason that I think a lot of us will be familiar with. So, yeah, uh, the disease in particular actually seems to be an early version of the same thing that was the Black Plague later on in the 1300s in the Middle Ages. Um, the, um, the disease uh, caused a lot of systems to shut down, and it made it harder for people to do things, as might be familiar to us. Um, and uh, yeah, it's called the Plague of Justinian because it came along during his time period. Um, and basically it weakened his armies. He no longer could um, fight the Vandals successfully and, and the people who wanted to control the rest of the empire. And so that beautiful empire I just showed you, it disintegrated back into the Byzantine Empire. Um, and ultimately he too didn't last very long after that. I think he survived the plague, but he died shortly afterward. But yeah, same disease as the Black Plague from the Middle, Middle Ages. Really horrible, nasty disease that is very contagious and very gross in terms of what it does to your body. But yeah, Justinian's dream was not to be. There's a great book on this called The Emperor and the Flea, because just like uh, later on, it was carried by fleas. By the 800s, this is what the Byzantine Empire looks like. Um, it's um, basically Turkey and Greece, if you want to think about it that way. Um, and so the Byzantine Empire changes shape and rises and falls, but eventually it's just kind of kind of holding on to its own territory. It's not really able to um, uh, take over other territories. Like we said, this is going to be controlled by the Islamic Caliphates over here in North Africa and Spain, and this is going to go to German cultures. Um, so uh, things have changed pretty significantly. So we have this weird sort of stump of the Roman Empire that lasts until the 1400s, um, but not really uh, the Roman Empire as, um, as we knew it. So that's a weird sort of fact of history is that Rome kind of continued, but it kind of didn't continue. It's weird. Um, and then at a couple points, um, the Byzantine Empire ran into trouble. In the 1200s, a bunch of uh, Western Venetians took them over and just uh, shook them down for money, basically. Although it left an influence on uh, the places in the uh, Byz Byzantine Empire, in what we would now call Greece. But yeah, this bunch of random Italians, it's a sign of how far they've fallen, that um, they are no longer able to stay in power. Um, and uh, then, in the 1400s, they're finally taken over by the Turks. Uh, the Ottomans is what these Turks are called. And that empire lasts until World War I. So the Turks last from the 1400s to World War I and kind of carry some of that culture forward, but not all of it. But yeah, the Romans, if you think about it, last a really long time. And um, Constantinople becomes Istanbul, and uh, the Turks uh, rule Greece for a while. And today, uh, Greece and Turkey are separate nations with a very big rivalry. But this uh, city known as Constantinople now belongs to the Turks. As they say, it's nobody's business but the Turks. But don't say that to the Greeks, actually. They will say it is their business. And uh, Greeks today still call it uh, Constantinopolis uh, rather than uh, Istanbul. But yeah, so I want to ask the question, when did the Roman Empire even fall? Did it fall when the Vandals invaded? Did it fall when there was the last Western Empire? Empire? Emperor, sorry. Or did it fall with Justinian, who, could, who was basically a Roman emperor for a while? Um, did it fall after him? Uh, some people say it fell when it became Christian, because that was a totally different culture, and things were going to be different after that. And did it fall with the, in the 1400s? Or did it never fall? Uh, that's what one science fiction writer said, is that we still live in the Roman Empire. Think about all that. So it's a complicated story, 
and it's more of a story of change than anything.